Okay, we're doing some more AC service work. Uh, basically, what I've got is we're going from summer to fall to winter. And we're at the point in time now where we use the heater sometimes and then we use the AC sometimes. And right now what we're getting is when the AC turns on, it's been fine all summer. But now when it turns on, we're getting a stinky sock smell from there. And uh, I kind of go through this every year. There's really not much. I've done a lot of website checking and things like that. Um, all I can find out is people say, oh, you, you clean the uh, AC plenum. It's got a bunch of crud built up on the inside. And uh, past couple of years, I've done this project over and over and over again. Every time I take it apart, the thing looks like brand new on the inside. No real dust, no gunk, no nothing else. So, uh... I've learned to clean it out just a little bit, and I just want to kind of walk through it with some people in case yours is smelling. You might have the same issue, or maybe someone can comment and let me know something else that might be going on, because um, I'm not seeing it. Uh, but anyways, here we go. Let's uh, clean the AC plenum. This is a uh, Linux here. I've got, uh, it's gas fired for heating, and it's got the AC lines running outside. Um, basically, the first thing you want to do if, you're in, if your uh, stuff is smelling is you want to replace the filter. Um, I just did this one a couple of weeks ago. It's got some dirt in it, but not much. But uh, this time of year, because of the smell, I end up replacing this filter. <sighs> Seems like every other week, depending on the usage. I'm trying to get rid of it. But uh, I've turned off everything upstairs. And now I'm... Uh, Gonna go to this guy right here, turn that guy off. That's our local service switch. And next thing I've come up here and uh, I've started removing screws on the outside. And then these guys are also taped shut. I had to remove the tape and pull the screws out of there. Kind of screws out all over the place and check. There's some hard ones to get to, like around the back side. There's one there. And there's one there. I have to take those out. Okay, I've got the cover off. You can see it doesn't look too bad. Everything's fairly new, which is one of the more puzzling reasons as to why this guy smells every year. Um, you can see the inside here. Let me turn my light on. There we go. You can see the inside. There's really... Not much going on there. I have a couple of dings on it from where I'm guessing it was put in. Because I haven't done any of those. Nothing too major down there at the bottom. Looks nice and clean. And then down in the tray. Got some corrosion down there from this, uh, I'm guessing this is a galvanized tin sitting inside of there. Got a little bit of standing water, but really not much. And then the uh, other side, which is the harder side to see and get into. Really not much going on down there either. Seems to be nice and clean as well. Okay. Got a little bit of corrosion there. So there's really not much to this. Um, it says to clean this only with water. So that's pretty much what I do. Um, I end up last year what worked really good is I put a hair of uh, what's it called the um, hydrogen peroxide because hydrogen peroxide will kill most anything so I figured if there was some bacteria down on the inside I put a little bit of hydrogen peroxide down in this tray and then added water and then at the same time I plug the drain port down here so I actually raise the water level up and put hydrogen peroxide in at the same time to treat the bottom 
half three quarters inch down there and uh washing this off with water and doing that stuff seemed to work you can't go overboard because on these guys <clears throat> when you wash them down in the water if you were to actually push water through the coil and it runs to the inside it'll go straight down to the blower underneath here and then it fills the blower up with water and then it will short when you turn it back on and you'll be out a uh i imagine five or six hundred dollar blower so don't do that okay got some cleaning stuff out here i took a cup and i filled it up a little bit I put a couple cups of uh just regular water in there got a stiff bristled plastic brush you could use these uh like dishwashing brushes they work fine a uh just a paper towel damp with water and put some hydrogen peroxide on it and then we'll go ahead and put a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in there as well not too much but enough to be effective we'll give that a little swirl around there kind of mix it up and now we'll go ahead and start cleaning this stuff up first thing i'm gonna do is take my wet rag I'll go up on top here. This particular one's got two plenums. I'm going to clean right at the top of the two plenums. Right in that little valley because that stuff will condensate and it holds all the dust that comes back down. See that? So I'm wiping that clean first. Because that's going to be the area that was hard to reach. Okay. Be very careful when you're doing this stuff. You don't want to bend any more of these little veins on the inside. Because if you put your finger on them, they will bend. Kind of like the damage that I've already got here. Um, I'm not going to straighten that because I don't have the proper tools to do it. And I'm not about to attempt it myself. And then uh, at the same time, see all of this up here? This is just rigid aluminum. They're like little tiny knives sitting up here. So if you're doing like I'm doing and you drag your skin right across there, it's going to be a really bad thing. This stuff is very sharp, so don't do that. Next, I'll grab the brush. All right, grab my brush. I'm just gonna start back there and just start gently brushing the coil. I'm going to keep liberally applying the water and the hydrogen peroxide and just keep brushing it down. Methodically cover front to back, left to right, and just keep going at it until I've covered the whole thing on both sides. I'm not going to film that because that's going to take a long, long time to do. All right. <laughs> okay, so well, I got the more hydrogen peroxide and water, and now I'm just going to rinse the coil, and I'm just holding it above the plenum, and I'm going to just kind of drizzle it on as best I can. Just a slow trickle, letting it go through the fins, and slowly trying to move my way back. So I do this rinse in like three stages, front to back towards the top, front to back towards the middle, front to back towards the bottom. And then the last step will be to rinse the pan itself down there. Start to go towards some of the middle. And I don't know if 
if you could see. Probably can't see. But uh, got water flow going th out through there and out the drain. It's coming down out of the tray. So that's good. I have taken the other panels off though. Get past the heater here into the control element. And what I've been watching is down there at the bottom, I've been looking for water coming out. If you see water coming out the bottom, you're, you're doing too much. Um, if you do take these panels off and you're not used to servicing this stuff, you have high voltage on all this right now. There's, uh, even though I killed the power up here, this is just 110 that controls everything. There's still 220 on these wires right here. So you definitely don't want to get anything inside of here wet. Okay, last thing I got, more solution. Hydrogen peroxide and water. I'm gonna pour it right in the tray. Kind of put a bunch in at once. You want the water level to rise up in that tray. Don't be afraid to get a couple cups and put it in there. So you want it to rise up in that tray and then what it's doing is it's also lifting the water level up on the sides and anything that might be submerged down there in the corners, it's now getting covered with hydrogen peroxide and water. You could do it a couple times, you could do it once or twice, stick your finger down right over here and plug up the hole to prevent the water from draining out so it works a little bit better. But there is a lip on the inside of this and you don't want that water draining down inside that motor again so careful but yeah that's pretty much it next step is we'll uh, put it all back together and fire it up should be good now for the rest of the year okay so this is kind of just what i've done on a yearly basis so far it seems to work um we don't like the smell that it makes during this time of year so we get in there and clean it like that and then it stops making that smell. And then we get into the winter and we're into full-time heating at that point in time. Um, we do have a whole house humidifier on the side. I've removed the filter and stuff off of that. Uh, so that's not harboring anything over there. But uh, let me know what you think. If you think there's something different in the going on here, let me know. And uh, I'd like to hear from it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye.